Welcome, this is Carrie Shell from On Point Quilter. In today's tutorial, we're going to be working with the quilt style one patch. And in particular, I have some tricks for coloring your one patch quilt and for this particular quilt, which would be great for English paper piecing, I have some suggestions for creating a sheet of templates in Electric Quilt. Okay, I've opened Electric Quilt and I'm going to select Design a Quilt from Scratch. And in the ribbon toolbar, I'm going to select the type One Patch. Now within One Patch, in the layout, you can choose the type of units that you want. And there are lots of options, but I'm going to select the hexagons with the H, which would mean the horizontal layout. And then notice that there is an edge length, and that's the size of one edge of the hexagon. And I want to set that at one inch. Under number of units, I will do 12 horizontal and 23 vertical. Now I'm going to view my project sketchbook and in the fabrics, I'm going to do a clear followed by OK to delete all my fabrics. Now on the home screen, I'm going to do a search fabric swatches, which is going to take me to the fabric library. And I'm going to select one of the 2018 fabrics of the month. And I liked the November collection, which is Benner Tex uh, by hand. And so I'm going to select all, add to sketchbook. This is one of the free fabric collections that's available on the Electric Quilt website. So if you don't have it, feel free to go to Do You EQ and download it. And then I want to also add a uh, background fabric. And so I'm going to go to the EQ libraries, go to the manufacturing basics, and I think I decided to do uh, the Coda Batiks by Moda and just took the first one, which is a, an off-white. And I'm going to add that to the sketchbook and I'm going to close. Now I'm going to color my first uh, flower garden block. And so I'm going to go to the design tools, use the fabric tools, and use the paintbrush. And with a single click, I will color 12 hexagons in a circle with the pink fabric. Now for the next one, I'm going to take another fabric and under paintbrush, there are actually multiple tools. And I'm going to take the one that's called the oval brush. And let me just zoom in. Because now when I select my fabric with the oval brush, if I drag it over the area that I want to fill, everything touching that oval will change to the new fabric. And so it can become very useful in this situation. Now, even though I have the oval selected, I can still single click on a patch and it will change just that patch. Now I'm going to put in the background. And for the background, I like to select the line brush because that's going to allow me to draw a line and change the fabric choices for that, everything that I touch with that line. I can also single click to individually color the patches. For the next block, I will select a second fabric and I will use the line tool to color the outer ring. Now I will select the oval tool and I will color the second ring. Now, if you make a mistake, you can always do undo and then select the appropriate area to color just that center ring. Then I will select the line tool and color the next outside path. Now I will repeat the process to color the remainder of the quilt. Once I've got this done, I want to change the outside edge to a binding. So I'm going to go to the border tab and I am going to move this to 0.375. 
Now if you don't have .375 as an option, you can change that under Work Table Options, under Snap Settings, under the Nudge Settings, change the Adjust Controls to an eighth inch. I'm also going to change the style to mitered. And now when I go to the Design tab, I can color the border. And if I want to see what it's going to look like without those dark lines, I like to hide show quilt patch lines. And then I can add this to the project sketchbook. Oh, and I need to save it, so I'm going to select OK. And I will call this uh, One Patch Flower Garden and select Save. Now let's assume I want templates for this. Obviously, I can go to Print and Export. I can click on one of those patches, and I will note the size of 2 by 1.73. Now I will select Templates. The challenge being, it will only give me one template per page, which would mean I would waste an awful lot of paper printing all of these out. So let me share with you a way I've developed to create multiple templates for English paper piecing on one sheet of paper. So I'm going to go to the block work table, and I'm going to do a new block applique motif. And I'm going to set my block width and height to the size of my paper minus margins. If my cardstock is 8.5 by 11, um, I'm going to set this to 8 by 10.5 inches. Now my snaps really aren't going to matter. For my snapping options, only thing I need to have turned on is Snap Aligned Segments, which is the fourth option. Now I will zoom in on the upper left corner, and I will select the Shapes tool and select the hexagon. I'm going to scroll up a bit so I can see the dotted line which marks my upper edge of my block. This is going to help ensure that as I'm dragging the hexagon on the workspace, I can have a very straight top edge for the patch. I will adjust until I see no jogs in that top edge. Under the Selected Segment Patch Properties, I'm going to change the width and the height to match the numbers that I had in my old print preview, so 2 wide and 1.73 high. I will do a Fit to Work table and with the Pick tool select the unit and move it to the upper left corner of the block. Then I will select Clone and I will be able to move that segment and it will snap to the existing segment because the edges are exactly the same size and the same angle. And I will repeat the process and fill the entire block. If I wanted, I could even color code this to match the number of patches used on the quilt work table. So if I go back to the quilt work table and do yardage and do a preview, I can see exactly how many patches, so that would be the hexagons, I need for each of the fabrics. So I will go back to the block work table, go to the color tab, and do some coloration using the fabrics I plan to use for the patches. And so I can now go to print and export. I can print my block, and it didn't actually fit on the page because I forgot to hide the name. So let me go ahead and close that, go to options, and I will uncheck print block name. And let me do another preview. And to show fabrics, I'm going to go back to the dialog box and select Showing Fabrics. And I can do one more preview. And once I have something I like, I can print it and close. As you saw, I could have also printed it without the fabrics. For additional tips and techniques, please subscribe to my weekly newsletter at www.onpointquilter.com. 
and check out my other EQ classes and tutorials.